Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shurai and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the Women Reservation Bill 2008. The bill seeks to reserve seats for women for contesting elections. We will also tell you the implication of the bill. To discuss the issue, I have with me Ranjana Kumari, President, Women Power Connect, and former Additional Solicitor General, Amrain Sharad. Now for the headlines. The Women Reservation Bill 2008 seeks to reserve one-third of seat in parliamentary constituency and state legislative assemblies for women, but leaves out Rajya Sabha and Legislative Council. The proposed bill shrinks the political arena for male politicians by one-third. And rotation of reserved constituencies in every election may reduce the incentive for an MP and MLA to work for his constituency, as he may be ineligible to seek re-election from that constituency. The Women Reservation Bill 2008 seeks to reserve one-third of seats in Parliament constituency and state legislative assemblies for women. The bill also provides for one-third reservation for women in the seats already reserved for scheduled caste. The Rajya Sabha managed to pass the Women Reservation Bill, but it is difficult to forget the pictures of the bill being torn to pieces. The bill evoked strong emotions from various political parties, but the government was determined to pass the Women Reservation Bill. This will ensure that the uh, women who are underrepresented in uh, uh, legislatures in India uh, get a minimum one-third representation and also having a, a history of uh, under-representation in Indian legislature of women, both Lok Sabha and uh, state assemblies. This should ensure that that, that under-representation is to some extent rectified. Gender difference is that this bill will be reduced by itself. This is very important for you. इसके लिए पूरी कोशिश हो और ये बिल आए तो मेरा मानना ये है कि हम आज भी उस जेंडर इक्वलिटी के लिए लड़ रहे हैं ये एक बहुत ज़्यादा अनफॉर्चुनेट पार्ट है हमारी कंट्री का। The bill proposes reservation of one third of the total number of seats in the Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies. It means that 181 out of the total 543 seats in Lok Sabha will be reserved for women. The bill also proposes 50% reservation for women in panchayats and municipalities, which is already in place in many states. The existing reservation for scheduled caste is 15% and for scheduled tribe it is 7.5%. The bill proposes to reserve one-third of the seats within the quota of scheduled caste and scheduled tribe for women. You look for reservation as a means to ensure that everybody gets a share when you find that only one set of people get the share and others don't get it for employment, for instance, for employment. What do you provide for reservation for SC, ST, OBC? Because over a period of time you find it is only a particular set of people who get it, others don't get it. If everything is equal, everything is all right, everybody should get an equal share. My belief has been that the truly backward are not the persons based on caste. They are the persons who are economically weak. The Women Reservation Bill came up for consideration in Lok Sabha but could not be passed due to lack of consensus. Regional parties like the Samajwadi Party and Rashtriya Janata Dal insisted that the Women Reservation Bill should be amended to include reservation for other backward castes. Reshma Roy, Raj Sabha TV. How will the constituency be selected if we assume that it becomes a law? My first question to you is, Mr. Sharan, how will the selection of constituencies happen? Because the bill does not establish or enumerate or codify any action on how the constituencies will be selected. For example, if a district has um, nine assembly constituencies and two MP constituencies, right? So how will it be selected, which one will be for women, which one will not be. This will require a delimitation commission. Mm -hmm. There are various ways of doing it, and it could be done in such a manner in which the people who now fear that they will lose their constituency may not happen. Mm -hmm. Because we can, what we can do is, we can merge two constituencies and make the three candidates from there. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, the, the, instead of having a single candidate constituency, we can have a, a multi-candidate constituency. And therefore, this feeling to some extent will get abated. So there are several methods of doing it. A proper delimitation commission must sit and decide mm -hmm. where it, it is to be done, how rotation policy is to be followed. Main thing which is necessary is the political will. Mm -hmm. Political will to do it, political will to empower women, political will to create a kind of revolutionary change in our society, mm -hmm. which is very, very male dominated and feudal in nature. We have just emerging out of our feudal outlook, feudal nature. So this will be a revolutionary step. Do you think we have the uh, will? Well, so far, when we passed it in Rajya Sabha, I think uh, we were very close to it. We thought that certainly there is a, a huge amount of determination on the part of the parties which are promising this uh, long overdue uh, you know, state, uh, status in terms of political representation. Then we were really very, very sure that this is going to happen. But the delay that is happening now, you know, because the bill has already been passed by Rajya Sabha mm -hmm. and not passing it and not tabling it in uh, Lok Sabha is something which is somewhere, you know, wavering kind of a situation at the moment one is seeing. But still we have hope because two and a half years more to go for the, uh, the present government. And we feel that if it is not delivered now, because major opposition party BJP is supporting it, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the UPA uh, constituents are supporting it, Congress party has been promising, this is part of their all manifesto, left parties are with the bill. So already two thirds of Lok Sabha stands by the bill. Already, when you count the numbers. So I think left this is, is the also best. Supporting. Left, that's what I'm saying. Left parties are supporting. <laughs> left party, in fact, have been unequivocally supporting it from day one. So I don't think there is any confusion, except barring two, three um, North Indian, Bihar, UP politicians who come represent states where the maximum exploitation of women happens where maximum operation of women is happening, I think they, they travel with that mindset to the Lok Sabha. OBC, OBC reservations. No, OBC reservation. Reservation has, within reservation. OBC reservation has never been there in the legislature. And if you analyze the representation, you'll find that they're not underrepresented. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I tell you one more thing. This reservation, we may not require in perpetuity. For example, one-third seats were earlier reserved in medical colleges for women. Mm -hmm. Now it is not needed because more uh, than one-third uh, uh, lady candidates are competing in the examinations. Mm -hmm. So similar situation will arise. But it is a necessary attempt must be made to empower women. Mm -hmm. You see, the, uh, we have this reservation in the uh, grassroots democracy, panchayats, district, uh, jila parishads, and also municipalities. It's working quite well. But it is working quite well. But on that bit, ma'am, mm. reservation in panchayat municipalities, 50%. It is already there in many states. Mm. But the experience shows that it is largely the males who are still in control of the situation. Well, how and long? the women how, how, are the ones who are doing the representative. See, how, how long you will uh, keep repeating the same story that women are under the control of men and they are not able to perform in the... You should come to see now the new researches which have come up where the elections have happened third time in the Panchayati Raj institutions. A lot of women have become leaders of their own right. And they are really delivering. They are not. First round, certainly, you know, in a society which women had never public political space, if they walk into that space, they need hand-holding. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the reason why they needed the support and, and also because men were losing power. Mm -hmm. So naturally, they will, you know, kind of not let it go so easily. So I think that was the, that is the phase when, which, which will slowly, slowly, uh, you know, uh, fade out. And women uh, are becoming formidable leaders. Look at the mayors of different cities. Yeah. They are doing so well. Yeah. Look at the, mm. you know, sabhasads. Look at the uh, panchayat yes. pradhans. I think we, we cannot keep saying that, you know, women should not get it because they cannot exercise power. That is not true. They never had power. So how will they know how to exercise power? Now that they are learning, they are delivering. So there is no question. Now let me just... One I'll, I'll just come to you, ma'am. It's time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will illustrate through the example of Madhya Pradesh, the implication of the bill. Welcome back. 
what will be the implication of this bill in real terms? Let's take the example of Madhya Pradesh State Assembly. Now males can contest elections from all 230 assembly seats, but after the bill is passed, only 153 seats will be available to them for 15 years. While the government stressed the need for affirmative action to improve the condition of women, the opposition argues that it would perpetuate the unequal status of women since they would not be perceived to be competing on merit. What it does is that a particular constituency shall not remain reserved all time for women. So this time it is reserved, next time it will be a different constituency. See, one other way of they could have done, because according to me, it should be 50%, and one other way they could have done is, suppose you are now 543, you don't want to increase it. The Women Reservation Bill is likely to shrink the political arena for the males by one-third. Let us see the implication of it in a state like Madhya Pradesh. MP has a total number of 230 legislators. Of the 230 constituencies, 35 constituencies are reserved for scheduled caste and 47 are reserved for scheduled tribe, which leaves 148 seats for the general category. After the proposed bill is approved, the scenario will change. Because of the 35 seats reserved for scheduled caste, 12 constituencies will be reserved for women. Similarly, of the total 47 seats meant for scheduled tribe, 16 seats will be reserved for tribal women candidates. And of the 148 seats available to the general category, 49 seats will be segregated for women candidates, taking the total reserved seats for women to 77. Males who could contest from any of the 230 constituency will now be allowed to contest only on 153 constituencies. The reserved constituency for women will be rotated after every five-year tenure and the cycle will continue for 15 years or three terms, during which period every constituency would have been represented by a women legislator at least once. As of now, there are just 24 women members in the assembly. Now, only for 15 years, that means the three uh, terms right, by way of rotation. So that means each constituency get one uh, opportunity to elect a woman candidate. And whether that is sufficient or not, uh, only experience can say. The representation of women in the parliament continues to be meagre despite attempts made by political parties to ensure better representation. Of the total 543 members of parliament, only 10% are women, despite the fact that women constitute 44% of the total population. While the Women's Reservation Bill is not an answer to the discrimination of women in society, it is definitely a step towards women's emancipation. After the bill is passed in Rajya Sabha in 2010, can we now say that the bill is riding the final crest of a wave that began almost two decades ago? With camera person Dijender Pandey, Reshma Roy, Rajya Sabha TV. Do you think the male politician at every level is supporting the bill because of political pressure? Or is he, gen is he genuinely interested in empowerment of women through this bill? The question to you is, do you think the males who have allowed this bill to pass through Rajya Sabha, because Rajya Sabha has the maximum number, of, I mean, uh, compared uh, the gender ratio, is tilted in favor of the males. No, it's a realization by the political class that there is a necessity for woman empowerment. 49, 50% of our population is today not contributing as much to political thinking, for running of the state messengery as it should. The same sentiment gets lost the moment it enters the people's house. It has not been lost there. There are some leaders, a section of the house, which has taken exception to it. But I wanted to com comment one more uh, the thing about what uh, you were discussing last time, in the last segment, that men control the women who are elected in the panchayats and district, jila parishads. And what about the women who control men? <laughs> I have a feeling that if you do a study, you will find that a very large number of men who are representing their constituency, they are also being controlled by their uh, better halves. Mm -hmm. Not uh, only so that, you, you all actually their leaders want to have say that women. there is no. <laughs> See, the leaders have women. 
whether it is uh, Tamil Nadu, whether it is uh, national politics, you know, the, the president of Congress party is a woman, President Jayalalitha is president, then uh, Mayavati ji is the president there, Mamta Banerjee is president. I mean, are they taking Sushma Swaraj ji, Meera Kumar? I think you have to really look at the, uh, are they not consulting their leaders? Are they not following their leaders? Are they not listening to their leaders? They are, it's not question of men and women it's the question is it the, the to answer your question that you know this as a citizen women have right to represent yes. and to be represented that is the first thing in a democracy but that right has been denied for almost six decades i agree ma'am the so, point i want to ask you is yeah. rotation hmm. rotation of constituency hmm. that's a very important link here because after every five years the constituency will change which means if you are contesting from one thing one constituency under reserve for women, you will not get a chance to contest from the same constituency. You will have to shift. And likewise for males. Likewise for males. So, what is going to happen to the drive of yours or the incentive to nurture a constituency? You know, uh, is it not uh, really given that if you are representing an area or people, you are supposed to work with them? all through, whether you are elected in the House or not. Isn't that uh, true for Idealistic. political parties? No, no, listen to me. So that, that will, and also no constituency is nobody's fiefdom. Mm -hmm. You know, nowhere you are supposed to be just going back every time to the same people and try to, and then only you will deliver if people will elect you. That is why there is so much of mismatch between people representing. There are no constituencies uh, in UP, in Bihar, in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan. People have represented up to five to seven times and have done nothing to their people. They have not gone back and created, you know, better uh, living conditions for people. No good schools, no good roads, no good hospitals. Maternal mortality is high. Uh, female uh, infanticide is Got happening. Got the point, ma'am. So, Got so, the point. So the point I want that, to ask is... So don't I assign a constituency. I think, and rotation, let me come rotation, back to rotation. Yes. See, rotation is the matter of, you know, the, when the, the committee was meeting and Geeta Mukherjee uh, and Pramila Danvateji and all these people were there, the, the whole thing was when they went around the country, it was decided as in a matter of justice. Give women chance at least once in one constituency let them and then the whole nation gets mobilized mm -hmm. because they will move from one to the other to the other mm -hmm. constituency and then let them do it themselves let them prove their leadership once they have pro Perfect. proven their point leadership taken. they will take it forward look at the implication the other way around and the question is to you mr sharan see if a leader doesn't get a chance to be repeatedly elected from one constituency eventually it boils down to policy making so if every five years you have fresh people coming in, so you have the same energy being wasted and repetition as far as policy making is concerned. Is that a threat or decision making will continue to be as swift as it is now? I think decision making will not be affected by this. After all, say for example, district magistrates are rotated after three years. Do you think the, the, the administration suffers? Yes. It's change of personnel and change of policy are different. Because a candidate is not there to really give effect to his views, his policies. He is representing a party. Mm -hmm. In our system, he is representing a party. So this party's policies will remain the same. And secondly, change could be better for the person who is representing the constituency also. Because sometimes you find that if they have not done well for their constituents, Constituents may be angry with them. So they, they go to second constituency and they get a chance to get elected. Ma'am, rotation. Rotation. is. Do you think it is going to create problems or not? Well, I don't think so. These are very trivial issues, you know, to say that, and technical issues. Like, you know, you, you in the beginning you raised about the how will the constituencies be decided. Then again, rotation. These are not the issue. The, the fact is that at the moment, is there political will? to change the situation of never going beyond 10% women in parliament. Mm -hmm. Are we willing to do that or not? Right. Are we willing to give women justice in our democracy or not? That is the question. If we are willing to do that, then Rajya Sabha has already passed the bill. Let's you know, table the bill in the Lok Sabha and pass it because we know head count that we have adequate number of people who announce the support for the bill mm -hmm. are sitting inside the house and they will support the bill. Right. So do it. It's time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we'll show you an interview with senior advocate KK Venugopal.
Welcome back. My colleague Reshma Roy spoke to senior advocate K.K. Venugopal and tried to get his point of view. What does the bill seek to do? We have big women leaders, very eminent persons. We have uh, at least three chief ministers today. For it is not that as if uh, women have not been in the high political positions. But that is different from saying that uh, where uh, we have 50% uh, of the population of this country as women, where are they? What are the implications of the bill? See, you need uh, a period for the changeover as it were, where they will be able to use the opportunities which are extended by this bill to women. One third representation in political life, in representative uh, government, so that they will be able to participate in governance, administration, pol the political field. And this one third representation today would mean that perhaps in due course, they'll be able to achieve the same representation and more. How far the bill empowers women in society? See, we have uh, seen the example, and this is a great thing that uh, we have been able to achieve by the 73rd and 74th amendments to the Constitution, where uh, so far as local bodies are concerned, panchayats, municipalities, the one-third reservation has been implemented. And today we find, and this is what the statistics show, that uh, women have been able to achieve as much as 40% representation. I think that is something which is remarkable. And that is where I believe that so far as uh, this bill is concerned, this is a beginning which I think will take women to a very great height. Will one term of reservation be sufficient for the women to fight the next election by themselves? You see, you have now a 15-year period, which means three terms. I think that should be fairly sufficient. See, there is a principle of rotation which is being used. Therefore, with rotation, I think the choice is varied. Therefore, this particular constituency in which uh, there is reservation for women, next year may not be reserved. Therefore, uh, the choices are there uh, as much as before. If a seat is reserved for the next round of elections, what incentive will the male member will have to nurture the electorate? I don't think uh, in a period of five years uh, it will be possible for uh, an elected member who is nurturing his constituencies to know whether this would be reserved in the next election or not. It is not reserved in this election because he is there. Therefore, if he is a prudent person, if he is a wise person, he will work very hard at getting the voters on his side so that if it is not reserved, he will be contesting again. If it is reserved after the next uh, period of five years, he will be able to get back. For it will be a very short-sighted person who is looking after his own self-interest if he doesn't nurture his constituency and develop it. There are doubts on whether women who do make it on the basis of reservation will be representative enough. I think they will be. If panchayats have thrown up women who have been very effective in representing the local area, I think they will be equally good also. But in the first instance, at least for the first 15 years, there has to be sufficient infrastructure for training them up. Due to rotation of the constituency, do you think any leader, whether man or woman, will have the incentive to nurture his or her constituency because he or she knows that he may not contest from that constituency again. But that was answered very well. And I think we've got the answer on especially the issue of rotation. But the question I want to uh, uh, get answers from for uh, is how is the approach going to vary if it, the representative is a woman? I don't think the approach is going to vary at all. She is a MP or MLA who has to perform the same job which other MLA or MP has to do. The, whether she is male or female, it makes no, no difference at all. Mm -hmm. She has to serve her constituents. She has some uh, constitutional duties, legal duties which she will perform. But a gender thing is a very specific approach related issue. 
For example, a male can approach an issue in a particular manner, but a woman or a female will approach it in a more sensitive manner. Do you think that approach is required in the existing political atmosphere? Ma'am. Yes, I think, uh, first of all, this is not some alien creature who is going to come and uh, contest election, who will look different. Or So many women leaders are there, and there is such high level of acceptability of all the political party leaders who are women in the country. So, first of all, there is no question of that. But secondly, also, you will see that a lot of researches and a lot of our work which have been done in rural areas have... Uh, you know, uh, given us this information that we, when women become leaders, there is definitely a different perspective to development. So the priority is school. Priority is not the shop, liquor shop in the market. Mm. You see, priority is to have health services going better and more stronger and, and so that women can get access to health services. Priority is to get better road linkages. You know, so I think there are many and not to develop a huge market in the neighborhood is not really the priority for women. So I think there is certainly development. If you put women in the center of the development, the development priorities will change right. and change to betterment of people. Right. Change for much more healthier and much more prosperous society. And keeping all these uh, you know, questions at the moment, look, we have such high levels of, uh, level of malnutrition at the moment. We have high maternal mortality. Issues, we yeah. have infanticide going on. I mean, if you count, I can paint the whole board. And then so, uh, those issues killings. women need, honor killings, honor, honor killings. killings. So, so women need to come forward and to be able to provide the leadership to change the tackle, uh, Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, sir and ma'am, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabatini.